Look, it's week one. Tensions are high, nerves are even higher, and of course, there's that twist at play to shake things up. Every Big Brother player in the house right now wants to win the game, but before they can do that, they have to make it past week one. And you know what? For some past winners, that hits a bit more home than they'd like to admit. You see, there are a few former winners that started off the game on the wrong foot, so much so that they were almost evicted in the very first week. They did eventually navigate themselves out of the rocky waters, of course, but there is a very real possibility that they could have gone home and completely changed the trajectory of the season. So, on this day, the day of the crowning of a new week one boot, I am here to talk about those that managed to escape this fate and continue on to take home the win. These are five Big Brother winners that were almost voted out in week one. Both of you are also safe. Yeah. Before we get started, I'm gonna quickly ask you to subscribe if you haven't. We've got a whole season of Big Brother ahead of us, and I'm gonna have two to three new videos every week, so there's no better way to get notified than to subscribe to the channel and maybe even hit that bell. Thanks, and with that, we can get into it. Yeah. I won the veto this week. I am super stoked. It means I'm not gonna be the first person out of this game, and I am really relieved and feel a huge weight off my shoulders. This trombone is not going anywhere this week. Now, unfortunately, I did mislead you. You see, there's really only like four winners that were actually close to being voted out in week one, not five. This is something that's just out of my control and there's not much I can do about it. However, to make up for it, I have three quick honorable mentions of players that almost fall into this category. First up, we have Evil Dick and Big Brother 8. The reason Dick can't actually be classified as an almost week one boot is because he was given immunity in week one due to the rival's twist, so it was impossible for him to be evicted. However, as soon as his immunity ran out, he became the primary target and he was even nominated in week two with the intention being to send him home. Of course, he managed to survive this once Danielle won the veto and Joe became the new target, but without that week one immunity, who knows if Dick even makes it to week two. The second honorable mention that I have is Steve from Big Brother 17. This is an easy one. Steve was an initial nominee in week one next to Jackie, so by being on the block in such a dangerously fluid week, there's always that chance that something goes wrong and he gets evicted. It's probably not likely though, as there was always a backdoor plan in place to try and send Jace home, and Steve ended up winning the veto that week. But had Steve not won the veto and remained on the block, there's definitely a chance that he would have been evicted over Jackie, so he counts as an honorable mention. And finally, we have Nicole from Big Brother 18. Nicole falls into this list simply because she was forced to compete in the four-person showdown where the loser would become the first evicted house guest. If Nicole came in last place here, she would have been the first one out and also almost assuredly loses the battle back gauntlet, which would have completely changed the entirety of season 18. But, of course, Nicole dominated in this competition and actually finished first, so to say that she was almost evicted in week one is a bit of a stretch, but not too much of a stretch as to not include her as the last honorable mention. In fact, I'd probably count her as the number five spot, to be honest, but I'll let you all decide for yourselves. This is my worst nightmare come true. This is my second time in the Big Brother house, and I am possibly going to be the first person evicted. Oh! Yes! 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 Congratulations, Nicole. You're safe. Okay, the first official winner that was almost voted out in week one was Josh Martinez in Big Brother 19. After not being selected to receive one of Paul's eight friendship bracelets on night one, Josh had to compete in an eight-person competition. The seven losers of this competition would have to pick an apple, and three of those apples were poisoned, meaning that the three players that chose those apples would be on the chopping block for the night one eviction. Throughout the competition, the players were given clues as to which apples may be safe, and one of the clues stated that one of the two yellow apples would give you safety. Josh immediately stepped down at this point and said that he would happily take the 50-50 shot at safety, so he picked one of the yellow apples. Now, granted, there was a clue beforehand that hinted that an apple from a red snake was more likely to be safe than an apple from a yellow snake, so Josh actually had slightly better odds than 50-50 here, and in the end, it did pay off as Josh did select a safe apple, which guaranteed his safety for the night. 
However, this still ends up being a risky spot no matter how you slice it. Josh may have had the odds in his favor, but there was still like a 40% chance that he would pick a poisoned apple, and then that would have put him on the block next to most likely Cameron and Jillian, and I don't know if Josh survives that vote. It's too close to call, but it's definitely possible that Josh can't rally enough numbers and they would have just voted him out on night one. Luck was on his side though, and he ended up safe but it's possible that we were just one apple away from a completely different outcome for Big Brother 19. Julie drops a hint that one of the yellow apples is safety. Boom, I know that I got a 50-50 chance. All right, Josh, go ahead and pick an apple. Your boy outbeat the wise ones, all right? He used his brain, he got his hint, and he's going for safety. Yo, it's been real. Put your boy safe, baby, he ain't going nowhere! Let's go! Let's go! Before we move on, I guess I should also mention that even following the night one eviction, Josh was likely going to be the week one target as well. However, Josh's paranoia ended up saving him here, as he gunned for safety in the first HOH, and he won it by taking the golden apple. So, Josh can go on this list twice. Firstly, for having roughly a 40% chance at being nominated on night one, and secondly, for being one of the primary targets in week one. But Josh luckily earned safety in both instances, and from there, he of course went on to win the game. So going into this HOH competition, I don't feel too great about my position in this house. So I feel like I need to grab this golden apple and I need to ensure my safety this week. You know why the f I did this. You know why I did it. Josh has earned safety for the week. I'm sorry, yellow team. You've been eliminated from this competition. I know people are gunning for me. That's it. I ain't going nowhere. I had a gut feeling all day. I did, I, baby, I pick up on vibes. At the number three spot, I'm kind of cheating again, but I think it's fine. Up next, we have Ian Terry from Big Brother 14. The reason that this is kinda cheating is because there was a night one eviction that Ian was immune from. But technically, this video is about Big Brother winners that were almost voted out in week one. So as long as we're keeping it in the first week, I think it's fair game. Regardless of the semantics, Ian came into the Big Brother 14 house as an excited young fan who was ready to experience everything Big Brother had to offer. Unfortunately, Ian was a bit too excited because he started doing crazy things that weirded out the other house guests. He would constantly just walk in and out of rooms without saying anything. He ran around the house naked, and overall, he was just driving the other players crazy. Willie Hance, the first HOH, was looking for somebody to target that wouldn't upset the majority of the house, and Ian was checking all of the boxes. But luckily for Ian, a miracle was thrown his way. A new competition was introduced for the four returning coaches of the season, and the winner of it had the power to keep one of their players safe for the week. Ian's coach, Mike Boogie, ended up winning this competition, and recognizing that Ian probably was in danger, Boogie granted Ian safety for the week, thwarting any plans of evicting him. Without this safety, Ian is almost certainly the week one target, and unless he won the veto, he'd probably be the week one boot as well. Once Ian received that safety, he was able to calm down and find his spot in the house, which of course helped him go on to win the game, but he almost didn't have that chance. Without Boogie giving him safety, Ian is more than likely evicted in week one, which is exactly why he lands on this list. You no, know, Ian's a very nice young man. However, I feel like he's a little bit of a creeper. Every time I look up, I feel like he's gonna be suctioned to the wall staring at me. He's gotta go. Ian would be an easy target this week. He's driving everybody in the house crazy. If I put him up, I don't think anybody's really gonna be upset about it. Oh, oh, any questions? Oh, any questions? Mike, you have earned the right to keep one of your players safe from eviction this week. I'm gonna invite down and choose to save Ian. Okay. Ian has been making people a little nervous. He's been real jittery. And I felt like he had a very good chance to be nominated. So it was kind of an easy decision for me. Here you go, Hand, handshake please. <laughs> you all right? Yeah. Just breathe, just breathe, you're safe. 100% safety, can't be evicted, huge. Coming in at the number two spot, we have an interesting one because it wasn't entirely their fault for being put into such a bad position, and that's Adam Jasinski from Big Brother 9. One of the twists from Big Brother 9 was that all of the house guests coming in would be matched up with their quote-unquote soulmate and become partners with them in the game. Adam was matched up with Sheila, and to say that Sheila was unhappy with their soulmate would be a complete understatement. From literally the first second, Sheila made it known that she was upset to be paired up with Adam, and it didn't take long before this spread throughout the entire house. She was just 
constantly complaining about Adam. And this negative energy made Adam and Sheila stick out like a sore thumb. The way that this first week worked was slightly different than a normal week, but this format change was likely the miracle that Adam needed to survive. The winning couple of the first competition, Jen and Parker, were not named HOH, but instead named the power couple. As the power couple, they would have the sole vote in sending home one of the other pairs. Adam and Sheila were looking to be easy targets due to the constant negative cloud that surrounded them, but by the grace of God, Adam happened to be in the house with the worst Big Brother player of all time, Jacob. Jacob, for whatever reason, thought it would be a good idea to publicly target and talk shit about Parker, who just so happened to be the guy in power for the week, and Jacob created such a fuss that when it came time for the power couple to evict a pair, they chose to evict Jacob and Sharon instead of Adam and Sheila. Adam may have survived this first week, but he got very, very lucky, and for that, he lands at the number two spot. Sheila, you've been matched with Adam. I'm not happy about this. Where did someone like get that this was my soulmate when I said tall, dark, and handsome? Oh my God. Stop and chill, and stop bitching. Who cares? No, soulmate my ass. Seriously. Just breathe. I don't have a sleeping bag with this guy. Sheila and Adam, the two of you, have been eliminated from this competition. Oh, we're both going home. I, I went out. I'm embarrassed to even be stuck with this girl. Now that we're the first ones out of the competition, I mean, it'll be an easy decision for the winners to say, look, you guys lost. You're the first ones to go out of this competition. You're going to go home. Right now on my radar is Sheila and Adam, just because of the negative energy. You know, the worst people of the whole game got power couple. Backstabber. Wait till I get HOH. His ass is out. Peace out. Everybody's just saying he's a snake. I just want to let you know what's going oh, on. Oh, man. Jacob telling all this to Jen. I don't know why Jacob wouldn't have suspected that Jen wouldn't go tell her partner. Uh, it was a total bonehead move. Yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what's cold as hell, Korea. I'll tell you what's cold. The fact that you didn't think that my partner was going to come back and tell me that you think people think I'm a snake. Should I wake up everybody in the house? Address it with me right now. You think I'm a snake? Who said it? Somebody, somebody said it. Who, who said it? Why, why do I have to be the one that says, you did it? Why can't they man up? You're looking like the yeah, one that's no. telling <laughs> Because you're not going to be a man. You guys can look at me. I overheard somebody say, who? 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 It was just going to be easy, like for Sheila and Adam, that was the easy target. But if Jacob had not said what he had said, probably should have been nice now. I'm staying in this house. Nothing more positive could have had happened for me. Um, I think we'll get a lot further than I thought, so we shall see. And now, at the number one spot, we have the best one of them all. The whole video has been leading up to this player, and I am, of course, talking about Taylor Hale from Big Brother 24. Right off the bat, Taylor got incredibly unfortunate that Paloma, arguably the most active player in the first few days, took an instant disliking to Taylor based off of seemingly nothing legitimate, and Paloma spread this false personalization of Taylor to the other girls and some of the guys in the house, and this turned Taylor into an instant house pariah. Not only was she already on the bottom, but the other house guests would take things that she said or did and would exaggerate them to the fullest extent to paint this picture of Taylor being an awful person, and it left Taylor in one of the most vulnerable and powerless positions in the entire house. For the record, Taylor was not any of the things that the house guests claimed she was, but all it took was a few false rumors to absolutely destroy the perception of her inside the house in this first week. Anyways, Daniel was the first HOH, and after his initial target, Michael won the veto to save himself, Taylor was the easy choice as a replacement target, and she was nominated next to Terrence at the veto meeting, with the intent being to send her home. Taylor was put into this really terrible spot due to the work of Paloma and Monty, but as luck would have it, Karma came swinging. Out of seemingly nowhere, Paloma suddenly quit the game after experiencing the mental effects of the house a little bit too much, and due to this unexpected departure, the first eviction was cancelled, keeping Taylor safe in a spot where she otherwise would have been voted out near unanimously. If Paloma doesn't quit, then the eviction goes on as normal, and Taylor definitely gets voted out here, but since she did quit, Taylor survived, and she went on to win the whole thing.
There is also, of course, the whole matter of the backstage twist, which, long story short, meant that even without Paloma quitting, Taylor likely would have stayed in the game. But regardless, Taylor easily takes the number one spot due to just how unbelievable it is that she managed to recover from her awful week one position and go on to become one of the most iconic and beloved winners of all time. My initial impression of Taylor is she wants to try to like use her beauty to allure men, which is a strategy that is so like old. Her demeanor comes across even more cocky when she's not trying to make an effort with women. She's just digging that hole for herself with the girls. Look, I have to pick a replacement nom and Taylor is a huge threat. And it's clear that the whole house wants her gone. The replacement nominee is Taylor. It has come to my attention though, that you've been rubbing the house the wrong way a little bit. So you're in the position now where you can rally for votes and maybe even apologize for some things you've said in this house. People in this house felt like they weren't connecting with me. And like, I get that. I'm a tough cookie to crack. But the final piece, to be told that you are making people feel unwelcome. I never want to be that person. Due to a personal matter, Paloma will no longer be continuing in the Big Brother game. Since Paloma was one of the five people in jeopardy of being eliminated and she is no longer in the game, that changes everything that was to transpire tonight. Since a key element of the twist was that no one was going to be voted out, both of you are also safe. Yeah. I'm in the game, baby! Don't underestimate me! Live another day, bitch. <laughs> and there we go. The point of this video is just to say that no matter how dark things are looking for your favorite player, there's always a chance for things to turn around. All of the players I talked about today were inches away from being evicted first in their seasons, yet they found a way to recover, and then they went on to win the whole thing. Sometimes, you just have to have a little faith. And maybe a little bit of luck, too. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I, of course, need to give that extra special shout out to all of my YouTube members who would definitely be able to win Big Brother no matter how atrocious their week one ends up being. And as always, here's a clip for you on your way out. Sheila and Adam, the two of you have been eliminated from this competition. Oh, we're both going home. I, I went out. I'm embarrassed to even be stuck with this girl. Wait a second. I've heard that before. Vicious, you know what I mean? You really are, but I'm embarrassed to even be stuck with this girl. Soulmate my ass. I'm embarrassed to even be stuck with this girl.